Get ready to have your mind blown because GameRanks wants to tell you today about future brain chip CPUs that could be used to power the next generation of gaming consoles. Buckle in because we're about to talk about CPUs that are as smart as a rodent. Uh, you're probably thinking rats aren't really that smart. They're actually relatively pretty dumb. Compare a rat to a regular CPU. Rats are really smart. Any brain is really smart compared to a CPU. The ability to legitimately learn puts a rat way ahead of any CPU out there. Now I'm sure you know how fast technology develops. Very, very fast. Phones are out outdated in a year, every month random new accessories are coming out, and your computer was outdated in a manner of a couple of hours. You don't know what you're talking about, my computer's top of the line. Yeah, it was a couple hours ago. Technology's evolving so fast, Stephen Hawking is warning people about artificial intelligence. He seems to have seen too many Terminator movies, but then again at this point I'm pretty sure we've all seen too many Terminator movies. Every single time technology advances, which is often, anyone with a Twitter account goes, oh, I need to say something about Skynet, I assure you rat brains are not Skynet. We are not under a totalitarian rodent regime as of now and they've had ample time. So what is the deal with this rat brain CPU? Well I'm not sure if you're aware how technology companies work, but they're always trying to outdo one another because they always try to make more money than the other. In fact, tech is actually one of the few industries where innovation has actually not just halted. The automotive industry is obviously just kind of meh. People need cars. We can do whatever we want. In tech, it is not so. The tech-savvy customer demands a constant improvement in product. And in this industry, that's basically almost every customer. And IBM has been on the forefront of innovation in chip technology for a very long time. IBM actually created the PlayStation 3 cell chip. In fact, they arguably did something that was unethical while they were developing the cell chip. You see, when they hired IBM to create their new game console's processor, Sony poured a lot of money into them for research and development of this CPU, and actually had a general understanding that after Sony was using it, that the research would probably be used as the basis for other products in the future. However, Microsoft walked in and was like, what are you doing with Sony? And IBM was like, check it out, and basically showed them everything. And by some strange coincidence, both the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 have fairly similar processors. I mean, they're not the same, but they are similar. Oh my god, you guys, it's like so weird. Now keep in mind, at this point, Sony didn't want to have a similar processor. This is before Sony and Microsoft realized that PlayStation and Xbox are brands. It doesn't really matter what's in the machine as long as it works has a relatively good jump in graphics quality from the previous generation, and is competitive with the other machine. Or rather, competitive with the other brand. Nowadays, they've both moved over to AMD, x86 system architecture, which makes it much easier for developers to create games for their platforms. But AMD is not IBM. IBM, like any tech company, usually wants to be ahead of AMD. And it's not just game consoles that need CPUs, obviously. IBM wants to be ahead of everybody in all applications that require a CPU. Welcome to the rodent brain. This quote quote-unquote artificial gray matter is an array of chips designed to behave like neurons. Neurons are essentially the building blocks of our brains. The system pictured that IBM has been showing shows about 48 million artificial nerve cells, which essentially makes up the number of neurons in a rodent's head. The company is calling these neuromorphic chips. Researchers attempting to build software for the chip called True North. They've been doing some pretty cool stuff though. Some researchers in Colorado have actually already managed to create software that identifies images images, understands natural languages and spoken words, and the way they accomplish this is by using the chip to run something called a deep learning algorithm. These are the same kinds of algorithms that you see all the time on Facebook or Google identifying faces and images, or the instant translation on Microsoft Skype, and any number of functions that people seem to really think that the end of the world is somehow going to stem from. You would run these deep learning algorithms and the chip essentially would create a situation where it thinks, or something very close to what we would consider thinking. As of right now, IBM and others are calling this a neural network. As I said, a lot of people are very afraid of this idea. And I kind of want to say something before moving on from there. One thing an intelligent computer without emotion probably wouldn't develop a taste for is vengeance or anything. Taste and preference are based on emotion. Even if we think it's based on logic, it's based on what we emotionally feel is logical. So before we go any further, let's acknowledge that the rodent brain is not going to take over the world. What it is going to do, however, is make an incredibly powerful CPU, which is capable of so much more than we even believe is possible with a computer at the moment. At present, IBM is handing these chips out to researchers. That's where Think North is coming from, actually. But all of this is years away from market. Why are we 
we even talking about it? What's the big deal? Well, do you think it's just going to be used to recognize people's voices? I would make the argument that there is no segment of the tech market that should be more excited about this development than gamers. Can you imagine sitting down to play your game and this machine that has learned your style, your ideas, and what you do six a bunch of virtual soldiers on you? How much smarter those virtual soldiers are going to be in relation to your strategies? How much more interesting the matches between you and a computer will be? You won't even need friends anymore. I'm exaggerating, obviously. But in theory, this could completely change how you play video games. Even if you didn't really change the mechanics of video games that much, it'd be extremely noticeable when playing a video game as compared to, say, having a phone that can do voice recognition without having a network connected to it. I mean, that'd be very easy to take for granted very quickly. Although it would be awesome, the idea that all of that is going on on a single chip inside your phone. It would obviously have ramifications for video games beyond just the artificial intelligence. A CPU that's capable of all that is obviously capable of significantly more than today's CPUs, handling many more calculations per second, and handling a ridiculously significant number more of threads. And the more you can get done at once, the better the game is going to be. I mean, unless you're talking about Mario Maker, but really, like, we're not talking about Mario Maker. We're talking about creating virtual worlds that are realistic and can change and adapt to the person playing the game, or indeed change and adapt due to many people playing the game, many machines learning from many people, and possibly even even from each other. Something that endlessly evolves and never ever stops being interesting. A truly dynamic video game. Depending on how long it takes to get to the next generation, this could be the next generation. We could be playing super powerful learning video games that are so advanced they freak us out. You're probably thinking, but if it's as smart as a rat brain, it's not going to freak me out. Well, yeah, but it doesn't have to learn absolutely everything you do. Artificial intelligence in video games is very, very specific. If the very purpose of the rodent brain in the game console had all that power specifically directed towards it, it's not like playing Call of Duty with a rat. Basically, this is just an extremely exciting development, and not just for techies who are making phones that recognize your voice. Gamers should be paying attention to this kind of thing because it's going to improve the products that we use in the future, and not by just a little bit. And while you're imagining the possibilities, why not leave a comment? I can't imagine this as a scenario that's not worth discussing. While you're at it, please click the like button as well. It helps us immensely. And if you're new to Game Ranks, don't forget to subscribe. As a subscriber, you'll have a much easier time seeing our daily videos first. We want to thank you a ton for watching and we will see you next time on Game Ranks.